Tom Hall. Here. Jody Shea. Here. Sean Babine. Uh, minded. Uh, Joanne Sizemore. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so we have one agenda item tonight. It's new business. And our agenda item tonight is to brainstorm and assess ways to improve community engagement add opportunities for meaningful dialogue, and increase public understanding during the annual budget development process. And so um, for this workshop, the first I've experienced where we have all of our school board and town council here together. I don't know about you, but I'm really excited to have some fun. Um, was that Kate? <laughs> we'll have a brief introduction, and then um, we're really going to get into you working collaboratively in these teams that I have assigned. So here is our sub-agenda for the agenda item tonight. We'll revisit our One Town, One Budget mantra. We'll talk a little bit about um, improvement cycles. We will clarify our aim uh, this evening and moving forward. We will brainstorm. We will um, then talk about the budget process that currently exists. And then we'll collaboratively develop some improvement ideas for that budget process. And most importantly, or equally as important at the end, we really need to flesh out some next steps. So we'll generate um, a brief timeline to keep us focused and on track. So I appreciate all of your smiles and um, excitement. I can feel your energy. I hope you can feel my nervousness as I attempt to facilitate these uh, very passionate groups this evening. Um, your participation is what's going to make this workshop successful. So um, the first thing I wanted to give us a moment to reflect on and uh, have a little dialogue around is, what does this mantra mean, one town, one budget? Um, I have my understanding as one of the newer members to this fine team. Um, but I wanted to just take a minute and make sure that are, are we still all committed to this mantra of one town, one budget? And so I see lots of heads nodding. Um, and I would just offer for a couple of comments if there's anyone who would like to speak to what this means for you as a member of the town council or the school board. <coughs> what it means to me is that uh, <coughs> we as a community have chosen leaders at the ballot box. And those leaders have chosen to work together to formulate a budget to make the town work, period. Um, I think for me, the mantra really is about, uh, as a community, we highly value education as much as we do our public safety and everything else. And it's not, we don't see as one is exclusionary to the other. Uh, and we want people seeing it more uh, comprehensively. And uh, for th that's what, how I've always viewed it. And that's what it means to me. Okay. One more comment. Councilor Cassa. So I kind of a unique position coming from the school board first to experience, that was my first experience with the budgets, and then moving over to the council and seeing how the interaction happens. And when I first started, it was, I don't want to say it was contentious, but it was very isolated. There wasn't a whole lot of dialogue and discussion, and it was very one-sided. There was a presentation made, it was a proposal, it, there wasn't discussion, debate, there wasn't input as to how the proposal or the budget was generated, it was just a number. And then it was a discussion of whether it was the right number or not. There wasn't a whole lot of discussion what was behind it. So I think, to me, the one town, one budget is a way for us to really understand the functioning of the town a little bit more as a whole. We've, in the past, looked at two different sides. There's the school budget and the municipal budget. And in, rea in reality, there really is only one tax collection and one way to spend the money. So it should be a balanced dialogue of priorities across the town, not just priorities for the school and priorities for the municipality. So one town, one budget to me means sitting down, establishing the priorities of the entire town, not just individually. Great. So as we're, as we're working through this tonight, so 
So as we're working through this um, process tonight, I want to remind or encourage us all to keep this, uh, this one town, one budget mantra in our minds. Um, that's going to be really important as we think about how do we improve this process. And so I heard Councillor Cazzo talking a bit about what it used to be like to develop the budget in Scarborough and some of the, pro the progress that has been made. Um, I've had the opportunity to hear Councillor Babine speak several times about that process and the fidelity of or the importance of maintaining the fidel fidelity of that process while also studying what's working in that process and how do we improve it. And so this um, cycle that I'm showing you here really comes from improvement science, which is a growing field. Um, and we think about this because we don't want to just make changes for the sake of changes. Changing is easy. Improving is big work. That's hard work. Um, and so what I'm hearing um, as I learn about Scarborough and the budget process is that we've defined the change that needed to happen several years ago by making this commitment to the one town, one budget mantra um, and making sure that it's not just a mantra but that it actually guides our behavior. And then we've made a plan. We've designed a way to test out this mantra. Um, we've been carrying out that change. So then we're here in this, the do section of this um, cycle and we've you know collected we have lots of feedback from our community um, both one-on-one -on -one conversations chance encounters when you're out and about in the community and then some formal ways that we've been collecting that feedback so we analyze all of that data in a rolling ongoing process as we always try to continu continuously improve our work and that's important for us to keep in mind because this is what allows us to glean in insights for what's the best next thing for us to do collectively and collaboratively. So the first thing that was really important for me is to understand are we still committed to this one town, one budget mantra? And when I look around the room, I see your faces saying like, yes, we believe this is the right way to be working together. But we might have to decide on some next steps there in the fourth qu um, quadrant there, the act. We might have to make some adjustments. We might have to expand some ideas or um, maybe even abandon some ideas based on what we now know after we've been studying this one town, one budget development process. And so um, Councillor Foley got, us, got this conversation started um, in a really public way and in a really bold way that I personally commend you for, uh, Councillor Foley, because it takes a lot of courage to get a conversation started. Um, and so as I started thinking about how do you really create a dialogue um, where you present your ideas but are also open to accepting criticism and feedback and suggestions on how to make that idea even better so that it actually does become a, an improvement, an idea that leads to improvement and not just change. And so Councillor Foley got us started by sharing what she was thinking and what I heard from step, from day one from the first time you presented the ad hoc budget proposal was, I know this isn't perfect. I know that there's some things that may need to be adjusted or changed or enhanced, but this is what I'm thinking. And I'm thinking this way because we want to add, um, we need to add more voices. We need to engage our community in different ways. Is that a fair sort of assessment? And then step two, one of my favorites, is make sure you have your friend's attention. So did did she get our attention with that first initial proposal? Did we all start thinking about what this might look like and how it might play out and what might be the pros and the cons to our process? I see some heads nodding. I know for me that's exactly what it did. Um, so step three then is to ask some questions and make some comments. And that's been going on um, at town council meetings, at joint finance committee meetings, and individual conversations that we've been having with folks. Um, and tonight, we're going to continue that conversation. We're going to ask more questions. We're going to make um, some additional comments. And then we're also going to really hone in on step four here, which is to listen carefully while, while our friends and colleagues respond. So again, I thank Councillor Foley for getting our conversation started as we start to think about this aim. Um, and so in all that I've been hearing, after the um, initial presentation of this proposal, I kept saying, well, what is the problem that we're actually trying to solve? Because really, since my very first town council school board finance, um, joint finance meeting, I kept hearing us, I heard folks who were a part of the process over the last couple of years saying like, what could we do to do it even better? How could we increase communication? How could we get more people to come to the um, 
budget form? How do we make sure that we are putting out information that's easy to understand so people can make informed decisions? That dialogue's been going on. So this isn't a new conversation that we're starting, but this is a new kind of unique way that we're engaging in the conversation. Uh, would you agree with that? Okay. Um, so here's my attempt at clarifying the aim. Remember, we're not just trying to change to change, we're trying to improve. So does this capture the aim? And so as you're thinking about that, I'm going to ask, is there anything that needs to be added to that? Should we improve that in any way? I'm going to have Katie go first and then Jackie second. Uh, I'm, I'm looking at the word more, and for me it's not, I mean, it's always more when you're talking about getting people engaged, but it's really, for me, it was about uh, bringing a, a more diverse group. So I think we have pockets of people who are very involved and engaged, um, but not necessarily working together, if that makes sense. Does that capture it? Yes. Yeah. 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 My observation has been that there has been a lot of dialogue and opportunities for people to, to interact and react. The thing that comes to mind, the thing that we're missing, and I don't know how to do it, is to change people's mindset. Because what I heard over and over and over is, we support the schools. We don't think that the schools, uh, should, that the money lost at the state level should be supplanted by the town budget. That's what I heard, and I don't know if anybody else heard that, but that's why I say I think we have to change the mindset because as much of the dialogue that we had and the opportunities for input and the reams that we put on the internet for people to look at, we didn't change some minds about how to spend our money. Councillor Hayes? Yeah, if you're looking for sort of words to add or concepts to add, I would, it, you know, as you read down, it's a system that encourages and supports two-way dialogue. I'd love to add, and it kind of ties to other things happening in the community, the words sort of civil and respectful. I think it goes both ways. I think some of the dialogue in the community hasn't always been civil and respectful for people that have differing opinions and values and thoughts. And I think if we can keep it civil and respectful, that goes a long way to moving us forward, so for what it's worth. Okay, so all of these ideas that you're, you're starting to think about as we think, how can we increase opportunities for a more diverse of community members to authentically participate and engage in the budget process by creating a system that encourages and supports two-way civil and respectful dialogue about community priorities and the budget? I think I can make the world's longest sentences whenever I try to do one of these things. Um, that, I want you to keep that aim in mind. And so I think generally we're on the same page in terms of where we're trying to go. Um, and to Jackie's point, we don't yet know the perfect path, right? And so today we're going to start to put all of these smart minds, these, this smart thinking together um, in the next few moments so we can think about how do we get closer to reaching this aim? How do we take the work that we have before us and really hone in on what it is we're trying to accomplish? So if you could flip your agenda over, or just have a piece of paper, it doesn't have to be on the back of your agenda. Um, I want you to keep this aim in mind and think about what ideas have you had since this conversation has been invigorated? What are some of those thoughts that you've had? Maybe you said, I'm not quite sure if it's, you know, an ad hoc budget committee, but maybe it's doing this or doing that. 
So that could be some of the ideas. Maybe you have had ideas about um, doing the process in a different order. Um, maybe you have some brand new ideas that we haven't even heard yet because you've just been letting them formulate in your mind. Uh, what I want you to do right now is take a few moments to just think independently and write whatever ideas you have about improving our process toward that aim that we just clarified together. And now before you get going too quickly with your pens, I put this picture up here for a reason. Because remember, new ideas equals change. But new and meaningful ideas is, going, is what's going to actually lead to improvement. So we're trying to find that creative sweet spot in the middle where ideas may be new or um, refined, but that they're also meaningful. wouldn't be short on ideas. So wrap up the idea that you're writing now. You'll have some more time to talk about your ideas, but I wanted, sh I wanted to ensure that everyone had a chance to have a voice. And so having that quiet time to really put your thoughts down on paper can be really helpful um, at, in helping you really kind of consolidate your thoughts or formulate your thoughts and also ensuring that everybody has something ready to share when we get together in our smaller group. So before you get together to work um, collaboratively in your small groups, I did pass out two things. Um, the first thing that I shared with you is our budget calendar from FY18. And so if you want to just kind of pass that around or put that in the center. Um, and then the second thing is a template that you'll, you could possibly use it's a full year calendar when you start to work as a group. So you really only have one of these. This is where you get to get cozy with your team um, and look on together. This shows all of the different meetings and the structure, the bones, if you will, of the current process. And so you'll notice that there's green on this calendar. This is a, a Kate Bolton classic with the pretty colors. 
So you notice that there's green on this calendar, and the green shows all of the town council meetings um, that were scheduled in FY18. And then the blue shows all of the school board meetings, and then the yellow, or I'm sorry, the green is the joint meetings, and the yellow are the town council meetings, and then the gray is just the school, the, the school vacations. So we already had last year a series of joint meetings where it was um, the town council and the school board finance committee meetings working closely together. And you can see that last year we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of those. It felt like more than that, but there's seven. There was more at the end, yeah. And we also didn't include July, August, and September on here, so that could be why. Um, so we have those joint meetings where we work really closely together, and at those meetings we talk about a variety of different issues related to the budget. I remember last year talking a lot about the process, talking a lot about how to engage our community and make sure that we were making the budget information really accessible. Um, then you also have the, the public hearing on here. Um, you have the um, town council committee, finance committee workshops on here. You have the budget forum on here that happened back in April. This is really for your reference. So when you start to think about how could we improve, I thought it was important first for everyone to know the existing practices. And then I know that um, in the school department, we have this other document that is three pages long um, that lists out all of the other types of meetings that we have as a school department. Um, this calendar starts on January, but Kate and I were, Kate and I were talking earlier and we said it, the process really starts in November when Kate is prepping for um, the rollout in December to leadership. So there's three pages here of existing meetings and structure that um, we work really, really hard at making sure it's a thorough, um, well-communicated process. And the town has the same sort of process, right? There's department meetings um, where Tom articulates expectations, and then there's one-on-one -on -one department meetings where they refine that, their individual department budgets. Um, so in the next 20 minutes, you're going to have 20 minutes to work together as a team to Think about those ideas you jotted down independently. Share those with your group. Bounce these ideas off each other. And look at this calendar and say to yourself, what could we enhance, improve, add, remove to our existing structure to get back at that aim we talked about earlier, which is to engage, kind of had it memorized before, um, to increase opportunities for a more diverse group of community members to authentically participate and engage in the budget process by creating a system that encourages and supports two-way civil and respectful dialogue about community priorities, which of course then equates to the budget, right? So for the next 20 minutes, you have this calendar. You also have a year-long calendar that already maps out the, um, for FY19 just when the town council meetings are and when the school board meetings are. You could feel free to mark that up or play around with the schedule of do you think the budget forum maybe should happen earlier? Should the budget forum be different? Do you think that the joint meetings should happen more frequently, less frequently? Um, do you think that we should utilize some of our other subcommittees, like the communication subcommittees, um, to engage the community differently? This is your chance to brainstorm ideas. And as a group, you're trying to get to two or three that you all could feel good about. Um, because at the end of the 20 minutes, I'm going to ask for one person from the group to present your two or three team ideas or group ideas. Any questions about the process? So now your table mics will be on for this. I'm going to turn off this big mic um, so that folks can at home um, can hear. And those of you who are here, if you want to get up and walk around and listen in, um, you're welcome to, d to do that as well, as long as our workshop participants feel comfortable with that. All right, so 20 minutes. I will bring you back together. I'll give you a five-minute warning so you can collect your thoughts in 15 minutes, and then we will present each group in 20. Have fun.
I never even thought I never even thought that. Well, so we're we're doing doing that. that. As other than the two budget yeah. yeah. uh, yeah. 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 who are a great group, I mean, I so to really getting them yeah. difficult to do more of how they're how they're going to be around the table. Right. And so then they want to the public ones because those are going to be a lot of care value. It's also more priority. But at one time, the town paid. We have one tax bill for all of the plowing. Three people have to use one department. And, 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 and it's all run the lawn very carefully by the school board and the administration. It doesn't have a net for a big direction. It doesn't have a net for a big direction. It doesn't have a net for a big direction. It doesn't have a net for a big direction. It doesn't have a net for a big direction. It's worth a reevaluation to look at what the pros and cons are the way we have it for. We've got a new research that we ultimately have to make. We can already call on our practices. What are the priorities? That's what I'm saying right off the bat. Our job is that's true, really because that prioritizes. I don't think it's very long. Because I know he was there when I moved here. To a greater degree than other departments. Because the town is aware of the services delivered. Because the town is aware of the services delivered. Because the town is aware of the services delivered. Because the town is aware of the services delivered. Because the town is aware of the services delivered. Because the town is aware of the services delivered. Because the town is aware of the services delivered. Because the town is aware of the services delivered. Because the town is aware of the services delivered. Because the town is aware of the services delivered. Because the town is aware of the services delivered. Because the town is aware of the services delivered. Because the town is aware of the services delivered. Because the town is aware of the services delivered. Because the town is aware of the services delivered. Because the town is aware of the services delivered. Because the town is aware of the services delivered. Because the town is aware of the services delivered. Because the town is aware of the services delivered. Because the town is aware of the services delivered. Because the town is aware of the services delivered. Because the town is aware of the services delivered. Because the town is aware of the services delivered. Because the town is aware of the services delivered. Because the town is aware of the services delivered. Because the town is aware of the services delivered. Because the town is aware of the services delivered. Because the town is aware of the services delivered. Because the town is aware of the services delivered. Because the town is aware of the services delivered. Because the town is aware of the services delivered. Because the town is aware of the services delivered. Because the town is aware of the services delivered. Because the town is aware of the services delivered. Because the town is aware of the services delivered. Because the town is aware of the services delivered. Because the town is aware of the services delivered. Because the town is aware of the services delivered. Because the town is aware of the
information was very So get down to a get size.
I have a question. I'm bringing something up. Um, it's kind of a rolling question. We're answering them and we're publishing them. We're getting those things out. So I think there's one real big We weren't talking from from stuff that we weren't talking about things that people cared about. They weren't necessarily talking to us about it. They were talking in their own. And then I want to turn it over. I guess we're like, friends. Uh, I'm, uh, about I mean, these roundtables, I think it'd be good that if we do a lot of minutes, if we could have smaller way, stuff that take a turn and have a few maybe more roundtables and more opportunities to do it. Something that I've never been able to do before. I've never been able to do it. 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 But even when I did go to the finance committee meetings, I was also even as a board, we don't really talk about the budget until the night of the second read. So there's never even a month of the board or a month of the cross board. There's never been an opportunity to get into that and being negative. So that find an avenue to really hearing where I feel frustrated. One on one budget so that I can't get more involved. And yet I feel I'm finding this way of understanding and I don't know how negative it is. I have to at least while we all knew what it meant. I mean, we all I heard a call of that speaker today, it was, and it got me spinning in the middle of the direction. Like, like, when do I see what I'm doing? And then we're there to do this. And they're, they're going to get what they want anyway. Right. 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 Right.
I think that's a good discussion. I mean, whatever it is, there is a lot of things. I guess I would say that. What do people think about that? But I think that's a good discussion. Or the rolling budget. They're all in the community. I was publishing them out. That's why I was doing it. So we've kind of all collected that pressure. It's almost a unique collective. You know what I mean? It's not a way. It's going to contribute. I like that. No, but it's a Like 
November, December, instead of waiting until it's the heat of the budget season. Um, and then that can help set the priorities going forward for what looks like, you know, people are either confused about or what people want to see in the budget. You can um, build the priorities around that to some degree. And then um, there's uh, the next idea kind of builds on that, um, a, an idea of a study group where people, and we're still flushing it out, it might work best with the communications committees to figure out maybe from those meetings what do people want to know more about, what should we dig deeper on, what do we need to explain better, just spend extra time on specifics, a certain specifics, rather than so much time trying to cover everything that maybe is already self-explanatory by going to the website. So, does that cover it? Does that sound good? Okay. So that was a hard act to follow. Um, but uh, I think building off of what the first group put out there, one of the things we did all kind of agree on as well is, you know, the structure is there. There is a lot already happening. So how do we take what is already happening and, uh, you know, not be become even more meetings out, but work uh, smarter, not harder, and more efficient, more productively. So adjusting kind of some of the uh, formats of the existing forum, for example, was one idea to perhaps uh, be more inclusive in, in the dialogue, the way dialogue works at the forum. Um, so that's one idea. The other uh, one was a real tangible idea that I loved from uh, Donna Beely, which was a, the idea of a, a, a mailing that would go out townwide that really would outline for people, because I, and I think this is true, people don't re necessarily recognize what every dollar goes for and all the municipal services that they get for the dollars they pay. And so it would really outline you know, budget information um, to every single door uh, in Scarborough or whether we'd put it in the leader or whatnot, but there would be a way to get that information out. And then expanding the, um, taking the initial idea of the round tables that the communications committee of the town council started this year and expanding those, taking them potentially on the road um, and working into other structures. Did I get everything? I mean, we we Will said uh, low information voters need to know more because voters need to be absolutely confident that the money, the budgeted money, is being spent efficiently and effectively. And we need to create more trust by by you know making sure people actually understand how that money is spent. I think I got the short straw, so this will be kind of rough. Um, had some great conversations, and it, it kind of echoes, I think, what the other groups are saying. One of, one of the things we had thought about and had talked about is, is there a role of using forums in a different way? And we kind of talked about the current budget forum. Maybe we need to revamp that. I think we heard that from other tables. But one of the things, it, it, for instance, I, you know, I've done things in Surlake sort of like tonight. A facilitated discussion can really help get a lot of voices at the table and to build some type of consensus. So we talked about, as we think about adjusting the calendar, are there ways that we could be for the budget process, really take a pulse of our community about what they're thinking, get their voices at the table that can kind of set the framework for the budget work we start. Could there be a process that somewhere when we're in the middle of the budget season, we start to have some answers, we begin to understand what some of our opportunities and limitations are, we can start outlining for them what some of the choices might be and they can help us through a facilitated, a free-for-all I don't think necessarily works that well, but really talented facilitators can really bring a group to sort of consensus. So have a mid midpoint where the community can start wrestling with some of the tough trade-off choices they need to make. Um, and then the third sort of forum, revamp what we're doing, but as we zero in on what the budget looks like, how do we, how can we make the information and Will, your term about, I, I, I won't go, whatever that term was, but once we kind of get to a final place, how do, can we then communicate that in a way and, and how do they want it to be communicated and that type of thing. We talked about that. Um, what else did I miss, group? Anybody, anybody want to? I, 
think the, the, the other that actually another suggestion was creating some type of citizens academy so that there can be sort of an ongoing education about the com and when we're talking about a 90 million dollar budget and running very complex operations how can we maybe put you know outside of the tensions and pressures of, of the budget season create some type of education process where staff can start to really educate about some of the complexities of, that the town is facing so that we're some of the ideas they're not fully fleshed out we so that I guess I'll leave it at that thank you there was an, another point made at our table of Katie Foley made it that uh, the town council really doesn't get into a serious debate about uh, the budget and we're looking at the totality of the budget at this point until second reading and that maybe there should be more of a workshop open forum discussion amongst councillors and it may be a combined because 60 to 65 percent of the budget is school uh, uh, more of kind of an open exchange earlier in the process amongst uh, and much more in a workshop setting where people are just free to express their opinions about where we're going with this thing. Well, there's always public time in, in those workshops, but really to to get the town council to be able to express to the school board, school board to express to the town council. So we, it's a it's a information educational session for the town officials, but also very educational for the public. We did have that forum, but I think Bill's right in that we need to have it, or Katie's right in that we need to have it earlier in the process, uh, or Donna, whoever, table two is totally correct. Um, earlier in the process, because we did have that the full town council and the full school board meet, but it was later in the process where cuts were actually even being discussed. So I think maybe earlier in the process might be more beneficial. I, I, I just want to add our group and, and actually what we use as the model for that forum is we did talk about the schools for years have kind of done a community dialogue where people come in and they can talk about issues about the school and what they'd like to see, things are going on. So we thought that might be a great model. We've already got sort of that down to extend to the whole community. So if we're looking for models, I forgot to mention that. So thank you. I don't know if we came to consensus, but I, I was thinking there are a couple of kind of practical differences. One thing that I've heard complaint through the years is the timing of our presentation first reading. Uh, we've already talked about, and I think I have things in place to separate those two. Just a week will make a world of difference, perhaps. Uh, and then Jody had mentioned that at least for joint meetings and, and others, Oftentimes, public comments at the end. If we have people here, we should be taking comment maybe at the beginning of the meeting and engaging in some conversation when they're here. They made the effort, uh, answer their questions while they're here. So I think there's some real simple, practical things we can do to help engage uh, those that come out. Um, one thing that we need to provide the whole time is you can't take anything for granted. When, when Donna and I were doing the road show for laptops, one of the places we went, I mean, we were there talking about why one-to-one -one technology was essential and how we were behind everybody else. And people just wanted to be really mad at us about the direction the schools had taken and specifically why we're not teaching animal husbandry. And that's the problem. We're not back to basics. And so we had to back way up. <laughs> we had to back way up and start from scratch about what schools are like now. Because when your kids are out of school, when you're out of school, when your kids are out of school, it's over. Like, you just are not in that mindset anymore. And it had been decades and decades for this one group that we were meeting with, and they just couldn't grasp anything we were saying and what was wrong with the way they learned. And so we need to really take nothing for granted and explain the need for everything, you know, why it's important and what schools are like. But Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm serious. One of the things that I think could help pass the school budget is to, for the public to 
know how much community services get out of using facilities that belong to the schools. And the community services budget is almost self-sufficient. And you think about what we charge to rent to outside organizations. And the, if you go into any building in this school, in this town, or any field on the weekend, I don't think the community realizes, because when it started, there was an offset. The town paid for all of the plowing for the schools. And they also took care of all the fields and, and all the grounds around all of the schools. So that was part of the offset. So just keep that in mind and, and as we move forward. What other things did the school department provide for this community? I think you make a good point that we get so close to the work that sometimes taking that step back and reminding ourselves what others may not know, that we know, particularly those who have been involved in the process for many years, um, to really make sure that we're communicating clearly and we're providing answers to questions that folks have or may not even know they, they have. Um, so I tried to capture what you were saying here. I'm just noticing the time. Um, and I know that I did not capture it perfectly, but if I um, will share this with all of you and offer that if there is some clarification that we can provide to some of the statements that I was capturing as you were speaking, we'll do that. And then, of course, we share all of our presentations publicly. But there are some important next steps that have to happen um, and some specific timelines. And I'm just no noticing the time, and we do have a school board meeting that starts in a, a minute or so. But I think the, the non-negotiable next step that has to happen in my understanding of the process is that the town council will need to take action regarding the ad hoc budget committee proposal on November 15th. Um, so we're not going to talk specifically tonight about what that action is, but town council, you know you have that um, job coming forward. And then there are some other next steps that will emerge um, from some of the ideas that were created. I heard um, several different things talked about tonight in terms of maybe the subcommittee of communications could get together and talk about this idea, or maybe the joint um, finance committees need to get together and talk about some of the other ideas. So um, I think that it'll be really important for us to look forward um, to when are, the, when are those next meetings going to happen. And I think the one thing we all agree is that we don't really have time to wait, so we have to really get started with this um, in the next few weeks or so scheduling some of those joint meetings so we can flesh out the details of what's going to actually be the action plan. And um, Councilor St. Clair had a comment she also wanted to make. Did you still want to? Oh, yeah. Well, <coughs> I, I, I don't want to back us up and I don't want to take up any time, but one thing I wanted to mention in the very beginning was when we switched to one town, one budget, I think there were some people that were confused by that and something that we talked about in our group. We all understood what one town, one budget stood for, but a lot of other people didn't. And I think that when you, when you implement something that people don't understand, they don't like it. They tend to not like it, and they push away from it. And I think it's really critical that we're out there talking to people, like all of these groups have said, explaining what does that actually mean? Because they look at it like it is two different budgets. There's two different groups bringing forth two different budgets. So how can you tell me it's one town, one budget? So we have got to start explaining better to people why we're using that mantra. And I think what you, we all came up with in the beginning is a, is a fabulous way to start introducing it. But I think it was important to explain that there are just some people that just don't understand it. And when, like I said, when you don't understand something, you don't vote for it or, or you don't accept it. Well, that's all. No big deal. Can I ask you a question about the timing? Um, why the November 15th meeting, if there's a meeting, looking at the calendar, I don't think that's not, um, a meeting on November 1st. Because it was tabled to November 15th. Mm -hmm. oh, I didn't know, the 15th. oh, I didn't know it was tabled yeah. to a specific date. Yeah. Got it. it had to be yeah. time bound? It had to be a time. Yeah. I got it. Didn't we say that people from the public Yeah, yeah. it's right here. It's the next thing. So this isn't actually working very well, um, but if there is anyone who would like to make a public comment, now is your chance. Do you want to give the 
find an object for this. Thank you. This will pick it up. That will pick it up. Um, I, I like all the ideas that were presented here tonight, but one thing that um, that really wasn't mentioned was something simple that could be done, and that's just really hyperlinking the document. It's 300 pages. Some of the stuff I don't care about, and other citizens don't care about, and they just really want to get the information that they want to find. And instead of spending 20 minutes scrolling and hoping that I find the right keyword to type in, you know, if you control F also on a on the PDF, you can search words and stuff. Some citizens might not also not know that, but if we just hyperlink the documents, I get, uh, at work, I get instruction manuals where I just can click on the page number and it'll quickly take me to that section of information that I want, and instead of having to scroll through 300 pages, I know there's like an index already and stuff uh, that's been done, and it's helpful, but again, it's a lot of scrolling, and we live in a society where everyone wants it now, the faster we can give people the information they want, and the quicker they, they can get it. So that, that was the only thing that I thought wasn't brought up already tonight, so thank you. Um, I really liked this format. I really feel like people were talking to each other, and I think that we should do more of that. Um, I also wanted to comment that I was I didn't get to go to it myself, but the plan of Palooza format where you know there was kind of an open walk in when you have time. Not everybody can get out to the budget meetings at night. Some people have young children, some people are elderly, they can't they don't have transportation for whatever reason. Um, so I think just making it more convenient and to be able to have an unintimidating one-on-one -on -one conversation where people are not forced to get up in front of 100 people to say what they have to say or to express their concerns. Mm -hmm. I think doing something like that in a week long or two week long or however long is, is either appropriate or feasible um, could be a great way for people to feel more comfortable as, as well as build some trust in relationship with all of you. Um, I know that there's there tends to be some animosity if they if there's a perception that you know one counselor or one school board member doesn't share the same opinion, um, but having those conversations can make a huge difference. And I really uh, want to commend you all for for doing this and to you for pulling it together. I think it's, it's fantastic. So thank you. Hi, um, I am impressed by this process also. So I think it's a great idea. To, it helps to deconstruct and then reconstruct with something that may be um, a little more workable. Uh, so you know, I thank the superintendent for, for leading this. Uh, um, I, I just wanted to add one idea, and that's just because I happen to like doing this, but a, a really good idea, too, to add is go out and knock on doors to go out and actually meet voters where they live. Um, you know, it could be individuals, it could be a team, like with one town councilor and one school board member or whatever. It doesn't mean you have to do the whole town, you do so-called targeted canvassing, uh, but it's very, very interesting what you hear at the doors. Um, and Because most people don't, they don't take the time, you're gonna make all these opportunities available, which is fabulous, but until you go to where they are, uh, you're not really going to hear the true story. So I would just add that. Thanks. Anyone else for public comment? So I will add these ideas I got them as you were sharing as you are running with public improvement. And then I think the last agenda item is adjournment. Does there have to be a motion for that? So <laughs> Thank you, Thank you. We'll come back to school board in five minutes.
Board of Education meeting. Today is Thursday, October 19th, 2017. May I have the attendance, please? Mrs. Ealy? Here. Mrs. Larkin? Here. Mrs. Murphy? Here. Mrs. Terry? Here. Mrs. Shea? Here. Mrs. Barr? Here. Mrs. Vashon? Here. Mrs. Here. Thank you. Would you join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. Let's take the microphones on, so I'm going to talk really loud. Don't be alarmed. <laughs> are there any adjustments to the agenda? Yes, there are adjustments to the agenda. Um, revise, uh, the adjustment is to revise 6.3.3, middle school co-curricular um, appointment list to remove 6th, 7th, and 8th seventh, seventh and grade math team appointments. And that is the only adjustment. Thank you. Um, at this time, it's 5.0, uh, public comment on agenda items. If there are any members of the public that would like to speak on agenda items, now would be the time to do so. Uh, just talk loudly from the podium, mm -hmm. just like we are. Um, you have three minutes. Please state your name and address, and welcome. Seeing none, we'll close public comment and go to new business. Uh, 6.1 Maine School Board Association Delegate. This is for um, Maine School Management and Maine School Boards Association have a conference in Augusta every year and um, all the boards send a delegate to the delegate meeting and we need to choose our delegate. The meeting is next week. Somebody have a nomination? I nominate Mary Starr. Second. Good. Um, any comments or discussion? Mary, do you want to... Ever run away? Or yes. I'd be happy. Okay. Looking forward to it. Great. All in favor of Mary being the delegate? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's unanimous. Thank you. And then 6.2, meeting minutes of September 21st, 2017. Move approval is printed. Any changes or comments or corrections? Okay. Um, all in favor of approving the minutes? Yeah, no, no, no. Okay, so everybody else in favor of approving the minutes? I get my answer. Okay, <laughs> so two extensions and then everybody else. Um, 6.3 appointments. 6.3.1, Jim Dandy. Uh, my recommendation is to appoint the co curricular positions um, as presented for Jim Dandy. There are several positions outlined in the attachment um, that are all booster funded. Move approval. Second. Any comments or questions? I think that's an important yeah. point. Booster. That they are booster funded. Yep. Thank you. All in favor? Uh, it's unanimous. Thank you. 6.3.2, uh, Wentworth Co-Curricular. My recommendation is to appoint the co-curricular positions as appointed and note that they are funded through the general fund. Second. Okay, any questions about that? All in favor? I'll call you now. Thank you. 6.3.3, middle school co-curricular. My recommendation is to appoint the co-curricular positions as presented. And those are also funded through the general fund. Move approval is printed. Second. Okay. Any about that? All in favor? Also unanimous. Thank you. That takes us to 7.0, the workshop. 7.1, um, MEA data analysis. We're moving seats again. Before you move your seat, um, I did want to just bring your attention to the back side of the middle school co-curriculars. There were some. Um, 
three volunteers that also are donating their time for those co-curriculars to happen. That is Tom Griffin, who volunteers for Builders Club, um, Jim Cronin, who volunteers for Interact Club, and um, Chris White, Chris White, who volunteers for um, the News is 10. So we thank them for their donation of their time. And now as we do move, um, I will introduce um, two of our district leaders, Monique Culbertson and our new improvement strategist, Kathy Terrell. Barb Hathorn um, worked collectively and collaboratively uh, on this presentation and designing the workshop but was unable to join us tonight. So with that, I would turn it over to Monique and Kathy and thank you both for your extensive hard work and effort that you've put into preparing for tonight. I know it was a lot of work. And now we do need to taking a look at the tents that are on the tables and seat yourselves. with our improvement process. We're also going to do a bit of an overview of the main comprehensive assessment system, which is the state system. We're going to work specifically with the MEA data. We'll engage in a bit of a data protocol, uh, and then to wrap up, we'll talk about the connections between ESSA and PBE. In acronym land, ESSA is the Every Species Act, which is federal legislation, roll down, replacing Mochella left behind, and PBE is our performance-based education initiative. So we are being informed by two resources. One is DataWise, which is a title looks like this. Uh, we have been researching this um, improvement process. This is the third edition. It's been around a while and we're going to be scaling up our improvement process, utilizing this resource and professional development around that. We also want to make sure that we're not making a whole lot of big decisions based on one data set. So we're going to be using balanced assessments to build an assessment system to make sure that it is balanced and we're looking at a wide range of data, not just one or two data sets. So just to begin, I want to give you a little bit of a background. Uh, school board members, you may recall that uh, we've had a bit of a changing landscape in terms of the assessment system in Maine. We had about six years of data through the NECAP and SAT, and we were able to make some um, improvements based on trend data there. We had one year of the Smarter Balanced Assessment, and then most recently, we've been um, doing the Empower Main and gone back to the SAT. So now we have two years of data. We really need three years to make some big decisions or really look, look at trends and analyze trends. 
So we've just got our second year data. MEA science data, if you recall, has been around for a while. We have six plus years of data, so we, the science folks will be able to take a look across five, six years worth of data. Uh, there was a link at the bottom of this slide, and I'll post this on the website, but that link will take you to all kinds of information about the assessment system. Um, one piece of information that we share just as a graphic is uh, all the different assessments under this comprehensive assessment system in the state, the testing windows, and who the particular assessments are focused on or intended. Uh, what I'd like to do right now is turn it over to Kathy, who's going to give you a little bit of a taste of an NEA test. Don't worry, you won't have to answer the questions, but it'll give you a little bit of a feel for some of the test items. It's very helpful when you look at this data to just kind of set the stage and experience a little bit about what the students experience when they take the test. So, I have... because we have more than one, we have only three options, we have five pages.
I mean, the yeah. like levels. Oh, could be eighth or eleventh. Okay. Okay. It could be eighth though because it tests right. all of their middle school knowledge and all of this is like sixth grade. Okay. Eighth school and that. Yeah. But I'm not sure. I don't want to. Let's say eighth again. For page three. Page three. Oh, because they would do it last. Yeah. 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 Well, that was like my eighth grader. We have to eighth grade. We don't have eleven yet. A per alley. No. I said the same thing. We're using a resource. So it keeps. Yeah. I got it. I was reading these other, other foods. I kind of want to go back. I want to go back and make that. Which one? Yeah. Other balancing other clues. But the first one. So simple. they test all levels, right? So Nine. Three. That was you know, so like there are kids at all different mm -hmm. skill levels. I mm -hmm. uh, What do we do? Uh, 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 really? <laughs> what about page four? What but I mean, the design. I know. So this is. Yeah. They have to really synthesize all the information. They have to synthesize this information and do like a really strong narrative. All right. So how do we fill up page one? We want to find that. Oh, what? I mean, we already looked at it. We already done. That that balance equation is throwing her off. It is. Yeah. I know, me too. I put eighth grade. That I'm not in fifth grade anymore. Or eighth grade. You guys can you can share with each other. I'm sure you know what the definition of an adaptation is. And number three is the best. No, there's no third grade. All right, here. Are we ready? Here. Yeah. 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 I kept it. I, I put it in the second edition. Page four. Eighth grade. Page five, eleventh grade. Okay, we rocked it. They're more involved than I remember. So, he's thinking now. I didn't know that they went over the Oh, yeah, I guess that was That's the one I got wrong. I had no idea. I don't
studied maybe that particular topic in science or are exposed to it, it doesn't mean they have the in-depth knowledge to answer the questions, the kind of questions that are being asked. Another aha we had was um, a lot of times this material may have been covered and in depth, but the way the questions are asked on standardized tests aren't always how students are assessed in the classroom. That's why a lot of times you get sample full tests and teachers will take previous tests and examples to get students used to how the questions are being asked and how they're supposed to answer them. Because a lot of times uh, when you look at some of this, I remember my daughter did some of this last year, but I never saw questions at like that in her science class. It might have been the same content, but the way the standardized tests are formatted, sometimes it's foreign to students who see it for the first time and they don't have that level of comfortableness, which impacts, I think, their results. But you know, you have groups of people that are designing these questions and turning them into the company that is preparing this, these documents <coughs> across the state. And you have a variety of kinds of kids. You've got kids in the rural areas. You've got kids in the cities. You've got kids in all different places in their learning. And to throw this kind of stuff at them <laughs> makes me sick. <laughs> and so that last group, were you part of this? Or did you have an aha? Or were you working together? No, I don't think anything that hasn't been already said. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to progress to our next slide. Okay, so now we're going to dive into the data. And the protocol that we are going to use is in part one, you'll make some predictions. And then you'll spend a, a bigger chunk of time making observations about the data. And then in part three, in inferences, we're just going to touch upon that um, part and you guys are going to formulate questions that came to you as you were looking at the data. So we'll start with the marker. Okay, great. So in part one of making predictions, when you're making the predictions, think about the data that you're going to look at, the group that you're in. So the science comparison data, as you make predictions, think about your group and the data you're going to look at. And just some possible sentence starters are, you know, I assume, I predict, I wonder. And then after you take a few minutes to make predictions, you'll talk amongst your group about what you were thinking you'd see. And we're, this is just a couple minute activity. And I passed out a note card for you to make your predictions on. Science comparison data like our scores compared to the state. So let me clarify. The comparison data is with districts around our area. Where is the data? This is prediction. We want you to think about what do you think the data might look like. Yeah. Yeah. I'm holding the ball with all the amber This is part of the process. How do, for example, mathematics comparison data? What do you think the data looks like? Oh, if our data is compared to local news, I do Okay. Okay, so what are you asking us for? Yeah. Yeah. But I don't 
As fourth graders, they took the MEA in the year 2016, and then in 2017, they were fifth graders. And so it's following the same group of kids over time. The red means that that is the percentage of students who were well below state expectations. Yellow is below, green is at state expectations, and the blue is above. So there are a couple of examples of an observation. An observation might be 3% fewer students who are above state expectations as fifth graders compared to fourth grade. It's factual. Inferences, students in 2017 had a better breakfast that morning. <laughs> Okay. We don't know what they had for breakfast. We don't have the data. That data isn't telling us that. It's not an observation. And there's another example around more students overall were at or above as fifth graders. And then an inference, low performing students moved into the fifth grade that year. So that gives you a little bit of an ex a, a couple of examples of what we mean by observation. Yep. So what we would like you to do we have some actual data here in a folder, and one of your colleagues in your group will go to that link or have that link and start recording. But what we would like you to do this is, this is, is take a look in the folder. There are lots of charts and graphs in the folder, and what we'd like you to do is four, sorry, two, four, four. Four. like you to do is start poking around with this data, take a look at it, and begin to craft observations. This information will go into a Google Doc, we'll compile it and share it with you, uh, and we're going to take the next step in terms of beginning to make some inferences, and that will inform our work around this data. So remember, as you look at the data and make sense of the charts in your group, we want just the facts. List the observations. You may want to just pick one and start with a minute ahead time. Are these two? Yeah, not bigger, bigger. So because of all of this, hard to read. So you may. Which would you guys like to do? Yeah. Is this the same information no, no. shown two ways? Uh, so you guys know. Well, you have a pair of data. Yeah. 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 Okay. No, this is the yeah, state comparison, and then these are like our surrounding districts. Oh, that's right. the same thing. Like it's our right. 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 green aspirational right. gray. Right. 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 Oh, I can, I can barely read it. I see it now. Okay. This one? And the state. All right. You have had a large ranking observation. So I think in your folder there are some large I wouldn't have gotten that yet. Yeah. 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 Y
they were great. Yeah. I think that's the Everybody number of students who are there. Are current fifth graders? Uh, no, I can't. No, it is at or above the fifth grade. Percent at or above the fifth grade. Yeah, that's a percent. So we'll get there. So the fifth grade. For example, 2011, yeah, percent our kids in fifth grade were 25 percent higher. Than the state average. That would be an observation. That could be our standard. Correct. So there's a decrease for six years running. More out of the You know, it's interesting to me. Are we at the uh, I observed that, some patterns I noticed. Okay. Okay. I'm so proud of that. All right, I'll wait until we get to that. And we'll just let, yeah, sort of write it on here. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. Okay. Um, no, it's still something in your high school. Sure. Yeah, there are other parties. All the other parties. Here's seven. Go down. Seven. Oh, okay. So I was over here. Oh, so what is the three percent What you can do is, this is here. You can go in afterwards and see anybody's data. So those have the questions that will go in the order. Yes. Okay. So observation. Yeah, 
rest of these are... I know, that's what we need to write. The same kind of but the range is between 12 and 18. But we are going to be getting the gaps getting bigger. Right. So then this is trending up, trending away. Yeah. Uh, so we just put the 2017 data out. You have a 19 percent difference between you have an 82 percent and a 64 percent. Stay close to the gap just a little by five points. Yeah, five points. Which is the biggest? That's the biggest jump. Well, the biggest. Disclosure, right? Oh, no. 15, 12, 13, 17, 18. Yeah. Yeah. It's like Hershey Jerky, though. It like is. They're up or they're down. There's no gradual yeah. right. direction either way. Right. I don't know why. Yeah, that it's awesome. trending up. Which supports your earlier, it's like compared to comment. Thousands of times that we adopted the new graders taking that test. No kidding. Which further supports your our original AHA. So I was like the pilot year. No, you were at or above. Wow. Right? Is that our third? No. What year did we get the new reading program? Another grade level? Grade eight was the less consistent for us. Okay, give me some observations about grade eight. Scarborough's results are less consistent. From year to year. The state has been pretty level, which is different for eighth grade. The state has been pretty level. 71, yes, they're, exactly they're pretty right. level, but yeah, they're pretty level. Yeah. Right. 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 Back to 12, down to 5. Did they think it was in the fall or the spring? Or spring. Or spring. Or spring. Or spring. Or spring. Or spring. Seven or yeah. either improving. Yeah. Or yeah. It's really like they know this is my kid. And then what happened? What happened in 2017? <laughs> That's a big jump. What's the range on class? Seven, seven or either. Oh, it's just eighth grade last year. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I don't know, 2015. Yeah. There's a pattern well, we can We're right, we're right along this kind of thing. Yeah. Well, very cool. Mm -hmm. All right, what's the other one? 2013 as well. Then I wonder if something changed in the past. Right. Uh, it didn't do as well. It's an idea. I mean, that would be a good thing. I mean, that is sort of surprising. That is a dramatic drop. But then quickly bouncing back up to where it was the year before, and then dropping again. We could say that we could say that from 2016, the eighth grade is trending up. Overall, the growth is trending up. Yeah, we are. We are. Regained our 2014 data. Yeah, right. So they start going down a little bit. And that's pretty significant. Yeah, it's 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 pretty significant. Ye
Four points. And yeah. what is that? What is that? Sixty-nine to eighty-six. Yeah. 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 No, it's, it's no, it's probably good for me to try to do this. Thank you. All kinds of <laughs> Either way, I already need trifocal. So. <laughs> Something, yeah, that would be good. Uh, what? That's a, that's an answer. That's 2013 and 2015. What fascinates me too is that it was in each of the 12, the differential 12, 7, 12, 5, 12. Each time we bounced back, it was exactly the same number. Great eight. If you could wrap up your observations. Okay. I don't know what that means. Grade 5 and grade 11 sort of mirror the truth. So just for one observation based on their data. That they have. Significant in grade 11. But if you look at grade 5, we can go first. Uh, we can go first. Right. So, uh, one observation we had was there was a 22% increase in students at or above expectation for the year of graduation 2022. Thank you. Thanks. Yes, grades 5, 8, and 11 have all been above the state average every year since 2011. So, six Thank you. consecutive years. Thomas or Dave? We noticed that uh, there was some significant growth in math grades three through seven as we compared them from year to year. Thank you. Um, the scores for students in grades seven and eight, um, you know, the, the number of students that met or exceeded the state standard were higher than the students. You know, that that whole group was higher than um, for the students in the three to grades two to six. In grades three to six. Thank you. Um, as a district, we noticed that we um, performed as you have said, the exact same percentage of Scarborough Public School students performed at or above state expectations in 2015 and 2017. Right, so we stay level 58%. Thank you. Commissioner Gage. Um, I guess I would agree with saying that uh, students in grades five through ten scored. 70% 70 70 of our students in grade 5 through 10 score cap on all state expectations. Yeah. We had uh, ELA English language arts Thank you. Screech. Overall data for grades 5, 8, and 11, we observed that Scarborough was 21% higher in 2016 and 2017 than the state average. Scarborough scored higher than all the comparable communities based on demographics. Thank you so much. That is the observation stage of the process, and now we're going to shift Similar. gears wow. into a bit of the inferencing. Turn it over to Kathy. Yep. Oh. Mm. So, one of the real value in looking at this kind of data is that it inspires questions. So. We're asking that you now, after you've analyzed this data, and I know you only had 15 minutes to analyze it, but what questions surfaced as you review, reviewed your observations? And the questions that you write down, these are questions that will help us guide our direction as we continue to work through this process to make recommendations for change. So if you would, have a conversation at your table, generate some questions, and record those on that table. My biggest question is, uh, why does the question ask the question about the average of the questions that have dropped so much in grade 11 from grade 8? Which was going on over from the... Uh, it also happens, right. Yeah, so what does it say about the test? Because that's really Could similar. Yep. All the way across. Like we've maintained the same. Yep, the gap, I guess, yeah. Thank you. So everyone's experienced it one for, you could make the for six years. <laughs> right, <laughs> running. It's been some significant. Right. So like the eighth graders, eighth graders now, they're not in the eighth grade. 
Yeah. 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 It's clear that yeah. we yeah. Yeah. students we had this right. Statewide. Statewide yeah. students yeah. Were, right. did not perform yeah. as well yeah. as juniors. Right. 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 Something like that. Why did they not perform Why as well as juniors? That uh, I think that almost twenty percent drop. Right. 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 Yeah, it's the science augmentation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. every other subject area has been almost yearly right. the last few years. This one's been consistent. Right. So this is the same company that we um, put together.
Um, as was stated before, we have lots of data. The classroom teacher has rich observational data on students because they do know the students well. And they do know the students better than any one standardized assessment or test. So we look at the whole picture. What I'd like to invite you to do is to uh, complete the feedback sheets that are also in the folder. And we, Kathy and I, are happy to entertain any questions or comments. Oh, are you going to pen? Um, I will turn mine over to you and I will give my feedback. I have awful hammer. Oh, that's right. I came from a generation where somebody did this type. Yeah, more than the old <laughs> I just want to point out, from you know, because I was following the class of 2018, mm -hmm. the district who bucked the trend and who are staying up in 11th grade, Brunswick, Falmouth, Cape Elizabeth, Yarmouth, R51, and those are our who? And those are our yeah. aspirational. Mm -hmm. uh, Kenny Buck was the other one. That's why I remember. And those are the ones that invest that have the higher spending. I bet their science curriculum is newer. They are the ones that dive into. Yeah. yeah, a little bit of imprint, but not a surprising list. <laughs> but the trend. Grade. Oh, the, the trend we noticed about yeah. the, 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 the dive, top, in, the 11th dive in 11th grade. They what are the districts? Brunswick, Falmouth, Cape Elizabeth, Yarmouth, Cumberland, and Kennebunk. And they're all the aspirations? They're all higher than us. They all went up. They all went up. Well. Wow. And we took a dive. Uh, I have some of my dive now. <laughs> Oh, we can all have a community pen. Group seven.
So anyway, thank you. That was really nice. Um, do we have a motion for adjournment? Someone second. All in favor?